Welcome back, everyone, to the LCS Challengers League Summer Promotion Tournament presented by Subway. I'm Mazel. I'm joined by Hawk. And what a game, number one. Winthrop playing to their strengths and honestly showing their cards from draft. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And seemingly to me, learning their lessons from yesterday as well. Having carries in multiple roles and allowing everyone to pop off. That's what you love to see if you're a fan of the Eagles. And as for Lit... You know, they had a team fight composition, but they just weren't really ever able to find the five on five that suited them. Yeah, I think that's the, the curious thing is we did see some of the marks that we showed from Lit during the season in the fact that, you know, in a mid game, in a late game, they sometimes struggle figuring out the direction they want to go. And I think coming into this one, we were talking about direction for both teams still being a little bit amalgamous. And we definitely saw Lit fall prey to that in that one for sure. Yeah, I, I think Winthrop answering more questions for me than Lit did, right? I think Lit still leaving some things up to, to chance. I think the one thing that they did answer, which we didn't talk about too much during the game, but I think matters a lot, is when you've not seen a team play for like a month on stage, they were not hands-checked necessarily, right? They were able to hold their own. And even though the team play fell a little bit short, I do think this is a Lit that very clearly if they're able to figure out a solid game plan can contend with anyone yeah definitely and i think we saw rock boom have some big moments the zary wasn't mm -hmm. enough to carry just about but there was a, a lot of good moves from kisno as well moving and being proactive on the map trying to match a lot of the clear speed from ocal but now we look at the fearless bands going into game number two some big things not available to winthrop but i'm sure they have a lot left in their tank and some other, uh, I think, key picks for Lit being away. Yeah, I think really big ones for me are going to be that Ari, that Gwen not being available for the side of Winthrop. And then on the other side, no Cassante, no Azir. Some of the yeah. favorites of these players throughout the split. But Lit now on the red side. They have chosen red after that last game. That is a guaranteed counter pick for Dragoon should they want it. I want to see the Garen. I know, you know, it's not very popular right now, but I want to see. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to see the Callista ban uh, continuously right now from Winthrop in both games so far. The Nico also going to be there uh, reminiscing from that game number one ban priority for Lit. Yeah, and now this leaves the question open of do you ban the Azir away from Sword? Because we saw messages pick yeah. it in game one. He can't go back to it. And Sword has been an enjoyer of the Azir throughout the split. It's been one of his best champions. He had multiple highlight reel plays on it. And I could see it being really, really early picked. However, I will say, messages, a way enjoyer. Ooh. That is also a very good matchup. So who knows? be very curious what style of composition they want to go for again trying to find an identity for lit right. is what i want to see coming out of this draft that is my checklist i just want to know exactly what they're going to bring to the table from the draft they grab now the talia ban the oriana ban joining the likes of what they had in the first series as well or the first game of the series the nautilus first pick for winthrop this time around we'll see what that answer is going to be for lit tristana first pick would really surprise me so i'm not going to talk about that too much i mean this is actually a really similar draft to it's, what we saw, and that is locked in. I mean, it's a big answer into his ear. Uh, we've been seeing is. a lot in the pro play, especially just recently, the, the best of fives in LPL. It has been consistently like first picked and winning. I had like a hundred percent win rate uh, recently, so it's incredible to see a lot of presence and pressure from the mid lane with the Tristana pick. And, and I wonder if it's a flex as well. If, you know, you wanted to go for something defensive, like an Aphelios for a Winthrop, you could potentially Goomba stop on top of it with Tristana. But I will say, Sword has almost exclusively played mages throughout the split. <laughs> he is very, very good at mages, but almost exclusively played them. And Tristana often is good into those types mm -hmm. of champions. However, it is Messages first Tristana of 2024 gonna be a lot of weight on his shoulders there if it is gonna go in that mid lane desire a lot of safety given over to mobility and a, a hyper carry in its own right but also being able to play against some of those engages that it already looks like lit or heavily opting into yeah and i think this is a really good decision you can already see as you mentioned lit they want to go aggressive they want to be the ones diving in so getting mobility something that he's able to stay alive on and then they're getting wokow on a big time comfort pick that can look to be mm -hmm. another carry if one of your carries gets their head chopped off well you got the viego now coming in from the jungle to try to clean up the fight 
get the Kaisa for Rock Boom. So we'll see what build we get for him. But at least uh, some consistency in, in the rise of priority we've seen from Kaisa, just with some of those kind of crazy builds you can go. But in the second phase now, we have to look at what exactly the jungle bands could be uh, towards Kizno, or if we're going to get a little bit of that focus towards the solo lanes or lit. You also have to wonder, I, I, I'm assuming it's a rel support, uh, if I'm being honest. Yeah, it's yeah, really yeah. similar to what we saw last game. So yeah, it's probably Could be. not going to be Kizno on this rel. I mean, so the Kindred's been Even banned. Let the I mean, Tristana, they banned the Azir. Interesting. Yeah, I really I, like the, the Tristana into the Azir. I agree. I, I wonder if, if at this point they're just trying to ban out Comfort or they don't really know what to ban. I mean, Denethor, I will say, more than comfortable blind picking stuff like Nar if he needs to, uh, and I think he would be fine in many, many matchups. Um, who knows? Maybe Dragoon is cooking something into that, though, but I think when I look at Kizno, I want to see like a Nocturne or a Wukong. Something that's not a pure tank that can add damage to the dive and is a very adept diver in its own right. He's got one game on each of those champions. He actually won the game on Nocturne as well, so that would be the direction I expect to see Kizno go here on 4. I like the Syndra band slinking in there. I think it can be very strong. Also, Sword Syndra is kind of nutty. Uh, we also get the Olaf band, some more bands towards Dragoon. Trying to make that uh, counter pick a little less viable if uh, Winthrop want to go with something more stable up there. Uh, I do wonder, though, if it is going to be something spicy that we've seen from Dragoon or if he's going to be whipping out something new. We get the Wukong locked in, though, for Lit. And I love this. Again, it's something that can add damage to the dive. They're going full in. Everybody, yeah. when we pull the trigger, when we say, yeah, we are partying until, uh, you know, until we drop, right? And that, that's going to be the until question. We drop they or until they drop. <laughs> <laughs> right. Whether it's them that drop or Winthrop that drop, I think is the question that we'll need to see answered. Ooh, I but like the, this. Annie, we've been seeing this creep into the meta uh in in other professional leagues we saw like jensen for example played it in the lcs finals on sunday this one actually has a lot of ability to deny dive because of its short range yeah and uh, uh we've been seeing it in the lpl a lot too just that instant point and click uh kind of engage potential with the flash play is huge especially against squishy members like there are a lot of on lit this time around Denethor gonna drop the croc and he's gonna here and uh, we'll see what the answer is actually going to be from Dragoon. And I want to see Dragoon not on a tank again. I did not love the Cassante last game. He looked a little disjointed from the team. And Dragoon actually has the highest damage share on his team. Higher than Messages and higher than Rock Boom. So getting him on something that can try to carry from the side that he's comfortable on. I love this Mordekaiser. Played it three times in the NACL Spring Split. Two of those being victories. He's busting it out now in this second game against Winthrop. I love it. You got to remember, we are in the upper bracket, but pride is on the line for both these two teams. It feels like a lot to prove between the two of them. Winthrop feeling like it's a foregone conclusion that they would be promoting here into summer. And with Lit feeling like it was a little bit of a fluke spring split and trying to pull it all together here and make a good run. This is the upper bracket. There's still another life on the line, but it's an important one here. We get a lot of that strength through the top lane that is going to play an important part on how pressure is given throughout the rest of the map. And let's remember as well the stakes of this match, right? Because this is not an elimination or a qualification match. However, <laughs> winner of this match essentially has two full chances, two full best of fives to qualify for the NACL, meaning you do not want to drop this one lit. Backs against the wall, Dragoon on the Mordekaiser. This is what it's all about. Winthrop already having struck first blood in the series, lit wanting to wake up into it a little bit. They were starting to show some signs of life uh, in that mid game, but falling apart a little bit as Winthrop seemed to cohese very strongly as a team. And that's another thing to talk about here as well, as uh, make sure you're spamming in chat who you got for this one. But Winthrop as a team, they work together well. They have a very strong structure with Artemis at the helm as a coach, but they also have a, a, a nice routine, right? This is a Seawall team. They've played together for a long while, and it's been nice to see that cohesion turn out and pay out in dividends. Yeah, this is, I mean, a team that won championships just a few months ago. They won 66. They won Hugh Fest. They won ACL. They are used to being at the top at this point. This is the reason why they see promotion as an expectation. And now 
Here's the last stop before Seelol to get into the Challengers League to follow in Maryville's footsteps, who just played in the NACL Finals two short days ago. They don't want to be seen as little brother anymore. I mean, hey, they beat them in a Seelol Finals just a few years ago, and they want to prove they can still do it. Lux can go for the early trade over here using Rock Boom Plasma as well, and Lux getting traded heavily back. That Ignite, you're about to get caught in Alcove gameplay here. Blade Collar used the burn. Ooh. It's not going to be enough. Turn around, though, as Rock Boom trying to fight back out of Chookies. Now the burn looking back at it. Flash here, and it might be one auto attack. He gets first blood. Mobility cleans these all day, though. He's looking for him. He this doesn't have anything, though. He can't get the distance. He's trying to cut the even. -y. And now Rock Boom he can fight back and plus gets the engage. Everything calming down. But as the dust settles, it was a kill for Lit. Wow, and that is huge. Mobility had expended the flash trying to get the kill on Lux in uh, Plux initially, but he had the second charge of the W just off cooldown to get the shield. We can take another look. This is a fantastic initial trade for Winthrop. Plux just going too far forward. Chucky's not really able to be DPS down, but look at this. Barely able to get that W, get the shield, stay alive, and at this point, Chookies, he's the one that's too deep. He's the one forced to run away and Rock Boom flashing into the minion wave. He knows he can survive barely plucks buying space and with no flash to follow, mobility doesn't get anything. And again, we have to give some praise over to Rock Boom. Still feels like one of the brightest pieces to represent for Lit throughout the regular season, but also you know, feeling like a, a resurgence, or not a resurgence rather, but a surgence onto the scene here for him. Because it uh, wasn't that long ago he was fighting himself at, you know, St. Clair College and still there. But uh, AoE Rise, things like that. And he's made a splash into the, into the team where I feel like as an ADC, he can continue to grow into one of the best that we have. Oh, and this is so difficult because... Kiss, uh, Wokao now coming down to the bottom side of the map, but Kizno's already here. Mobility and Chookies, they know they can't step up to this wave and they weren't able to crash it. Rock Boom has the extra cull to try to, uh, you know, get that extra gold, extra combat Whoa. stats as well. Plux wants to force. Can't get it. Nice little drag back in as well. Blade Collar going to be used to lock him out here. Rock Boom trying to trade in onto mobility here. Comes here. Kizno. Wokao right there to match him. It's a 3v3 that Kizno doesn't want. Now Wokao moving in. Rock Boom and Plux able to move away from the fight itself. But Wokao has to find an engage onto Kizno. Kizno will end up burning his flash because of it. And no clone up and available means that that stun could come through able to block it but this is big for Winthrop because now they're able to break the freeze and they actually got a pretty big health lead with Lit having already taken their base so this went from a really good position in the lane for Lit to a slightly less good position but regardless I mean these kills going down or that that one kill and the leads that they have in their lanes for Lit is so big because this composition Ooh. never mind we're still going if Wokow gets resets, it could be a triple kill for them. And health bars are starting to get a little bit low for Lit. They do push them out of the way. Wokow might be looking to catch somebody backing here. This is so obnoxious. Yeah, he really is. And that's perfectly perfect for Winthrop. Yeah, look at the wave bottom. I mean, this is a ton of creeps that are going to get denied from Rock Boom. He's forced mm -hmm. to take yet another base. Mobility has not had to use his yet. If he can just reset this wave, get himself a base timer, he'll be up a solid amount, or maybe just equalizing the kill because of the creep advantage that he's able to have. Wokow knows he doesn't need to get the kills. He just needs to delay. And it goes into exactly what I was going to say. This lit composition wants to be ahead because when you're playing dive you want to be able to one shot people and try to end the fights quickly so if they're able to get ahead and do that it's going to help so much as opposed to winthrop you know they've got the reset comp they've got a little bit of scaling on their side a little bit of safety all of a sudden if they're the ones ahead be very difficult to start surviving these ones. Buster Shot already got used by messages. They don't expect there to be three members of Winthrop here. So Kisno now to answer in kind. Plux goes for the engage. Hippers has been used. Chookies, he's burning, and he'll fall to Plux. And it's a nice kill. 3v3 in mid, but Chookies was not able to find messages. The Tristana getting away. And yet again, the Nautilus just barely walking too far forward. Sword now, he needs to be a little bit careful. He's got Wokow here to defend him as well as Tibbers. Should be okay. 
It's a nice little trade on Tibbers. A little extra gold there, you know. Tibbers is worth something. Rock Boom uh, in an awkward position over here with Chookies right behind Plux. Plux will make it here first. Actually doesn't stick in the bush long enough to see that Plux is on his way. And now Mobility under tower in some trouble. One more CC, one more Plasma stack. It's not oh. enough. Turret shots to Plux and it rains hell onto the bot lane of Lit. Some little slip ups and now Winthrop's bot side is in the business. Yeah, and support's picking up kills across the map. I mean, it's honestly not going to mean too much because it went over to Chucky's and Mobility did not get an assist. That was a support solo kill under the tower, but still, Pluck, that feels bad. Mobility's flash was like two seconds from coming off cooldown, and they weren't able to secure the kill. Just look at the bottom. The flash, okay, it's inaccurate on the bottom, but it, it's barely not up and available. It's up now, and... Flux not able to get out of tower range. I mean, hey, at least it was him and not Rock Boom. Yeah, I think it's a little uh, consolation prize there. Flux will run into a backing win through a bot lane, but they just wanted the fight after. Nice feather storm to block out of the crash down. Flash out from Rock Boom. You got to watch the blade color, though, as Flux getting the re-engage. He's all by himself trying to take mobility out. Rock Boom can't join him. And dysfunction reigning supreme. The flash from Tookies and mobility is on fire. Don't even need the dredge line to hit the Kai'Sa. We're just taxiing to a minion. Hits the auto, hits the E, and mobility flash. Denethor? Denethor? Denethor's asserting his dominance here. He wants Dragoon, and he wow. gets him. That's a hungry, hungry croc. And all of a sudden, this dive count that wants to be getting ahead after Rock Boom gets the first blood is falling apart. Mobility, he's up 20 CS. Now he's up a couple of kills as well. And with Denethor getting his due in top lane, we said that Dragoon needed to be impactful on a signature champ. And it's looking like it's gonna be tough. I mean, it's just Plux trying to stop the base. He wants to be just as annoying as Wokow was, but... This Zaya is level six. You are never winning this 2v2. Rock Boom was not really in position to follow up with any kind of damage either. And just a really good recognition from the Eagles that they can, in fact, take this fight without needing full HP. Mobility's so good, man. Some of the little movements, some of the little plays there. And uh, really love to see him thriving under the Winthrop banner. Now we took a Denethor, who is absolutely oh. thriving on this island. Yeah, and he got the shield with the Empower W, the mm -hmm. Empower Renekton W. They changed this a couple seasons ago. Insta pop shields, and that's so much of Mordekaiser's dueling power is the oh, EHP that he gets from that W. Dragoon, and now he might be dead again. He doesn't have the Death Realm here. He's going to have to get out. He goes oh, to his no. own. Wokal takes him down. Top lane is looking rough, and let need an answer. They're looking butt side. Yeah, this wave is pushing away from them, but look how respectful they're playing. They understand Newton's Law League of Legends. There he unless... is. They get him, the Cyclone combo. They're going to find another one. Mobility has no way out, and the shutdown goes to Rock Boom. Now they can find a second one. Nice denial of the dredge line there, and Plux gets that one too. All right, good pickup right there. Rock Boom getting one back. They're going to deny the wave as well. Lit needed that one because these side lanes were starting to fall to pieces. But still, I, I, I worry, like, it's just like last game. Bot lane may be pretty even, but with top lane being this far ahead for Winthrop, I feel like Denethor is going to be way too impactful on this Renekton, especially when we look at these mid-game team fights. Uh, you know, we've got a dragon spawning in a little while, but Grubs in less than a minute. Like, this guy is going to be a huge problem come that time. Chookies, now he wants messages. They're just looking for the roam play in mid lane. The combo can be so deadly. There's so much CC on the side of Winthrop that gets layered right. Now we actually look back to it. There will be a, an interesting discussion when it comes to the next uh, Void Grubbies because there is a two for one ratio right now between the teams. Winthrop going to be able to get a might stack if they can get all three. And uh, right now, I think that could be of importance for them. Yeah, and I'm going to be honest. I don't think Winthrop cares that much about the Void Grubs. Their composition is not that great at walking up and hitting towers. They're much more of a dive comp in their own right as well. Whereas Lit, with their Tristana, they want them way more. So I think it's a lot more about denying the five stack from Lit, which they have already achieved, and just protecting their bottom lane, playing for kills. Because I think Kizno and Messages, they've got mid-wave crash. They're going to make their way down here and maybe look for a dive. Messages and Kizno going at it. There is the... 
five stack gonna be complete for Winthrop. I think if you just give this, that's really rough for Lit too, because again, they, they might not have the side lane uh, structure power, but they will be able to take down structures later into the game easily. Now they are hovering bot side with Kisno. I mean, it's another situation. I'm not sure what Lit's goal is. They trade a Raptor camp and a Krug camp for the Void Grubs. This is just the worst trade deal in the history of trade deals, maybe ever. Like, they're not able to attack a flashless mobility, flashless chookies. Ooh. Yes, it's hard to dive a Zaya, but I, I just wonder if you're at this point with your dive comp where you could have maybe looked for more. You should know that Wokow was not on this side of the map with the word coverage that they had, but regardless, they're not able to get anything, and that is going to be the Kevins getting spawned up. We have first items coming up for a lot of members on Lit. At least the Rallies, the Sundered Sky there for Dragoon and Kizno, respectively. We do have the Static Shiv completed for Rock Boom. Wokout is towards bot side. Will be spotted out by this ward as soon as he walks into it. So Lit can play around that, and they are collapsing right now. Yeah, four members. Sword not here yet. Oh, Death no. does have two do they know? It goes really crazy. Do they know? They don't know. They don't know. They're going to get the engage on over here. Nice flash play there. They already knew that Wokow was there, but is the Wombo combo enough? The Cyclones raiding supreme, and they're getting caught up in the windstorm. Messages trying to go under tower, but they won't find any more. That's two quick kills. Lit finally able to get something with that massive bottom side control they have. They knew exactly where Wokal and the rest of the team were, and they're able to punish so well played to them. I mean, honestly, at this point, it is a foregone conclusion who's going to be winning this fight. Plux, I mean, I want to give credit for a really nice engage on the multiple members. Even though Mobility has the Feather Storm, he is just one shot with all the CC and damage that these four can output. I love that uh, Wokai was still trying to play sneaky in the bush. <laughs> and I think they'll go back to that, look at that, uh, be like, ah, I see. That's egg on my face. Uh, because I, I think in those situations, vision can be so important. I love the way Lit played around. Oh my goodness. Tookies, he wants to engage, can't hit the dress line. Sword, he's flashing for the auto attack Ooh. plus the Q combo. And he gets him. Plux is down. Now Message is being chased by a man with an anchor and an angry bear. That's a flash out. That's another critical flash getting expended on the backside as well. Chookies doing the chase down just to get the extra cooldown. This will almost certainly give Winthrop the dragon. Not really any stacking for either side to speak of in this game, but I mean, with how even things are, I think we're in it for another long haul. I love some of the itemization coming through here as well for Denethor. He started with the Hex Drinker and he's like, well, I'm, I have a lead now. Let's uh, let's go for damage. And uh, ends up finding his spike as well. Now we are fighting around the dragon. Dragon will reset. Lit moving in. They have all five down here. Winthrop do have TP from Denethor. Yeah, that TP advantage is going to be so big because Lit, they're on a timer. They're going to be dropping waves in the side lane. And here he there comes he on the flank. Look at messages. No flash. You're in the river, and you know that's a place where Crocs go. Now Lit trying to move on to the other side of fight. They want to move away from Denethor. That's a four-man knockup, though. Chucky's the angle now. Messages trying to get the reset. Denethor has found Dragoon, but he's slicing dicing his way out of there. He can't do it. He's stuck in the death realm. Dragoon taking the fight to him now as Lit moving for mobility. mobility. He's getting caught and dragged down to his death. Denethor, though, he gets locked down his own right. That's the double marksman comp coming alive for Lit. They'll take Sword out with them. An angry bear claims one back, but messages in Rock Boom come up big. Wow, and Lit manages to come out ahead in that fight. I did not expect this to be a winning engagement for them, but where is this decisiveness from Plux Ben all season? Look at the commitment onto Wokow. They're the ones that are able to one-shot the Viego before he has a chance to do anything in this fight. And the way Denethor gets zoned out as well, Dragoon recognizing that his job is just to remove the fed crocodile, keeping the backline double marksman completely safe the entire time. And it looks for a second like mobility will be able to cook, but with no frontline, no flash, no ultimate, it is not a chance in hell that he's able to clutch that one out. And I believe at the end of it all, it was an ace or a delayed ace coming through for Lit. That's huge. Huge indeed, and even huger so. Messages, Rock Boom, both have a ton of gold now. Uh, we'll see what them get to second items here shortly, I'm sure. But it is a Rift Herald play by Winthrop to try to keep up some tempo on the map. I mean, these marksmen, they're the ones getting all the kills. Lit's gold allocation is so beautiful. And while 
Winthrop's is good. This double marksman, this dive composition being online, all of a sudden Winthrop, they're going to struggle to find targets to one shot safely without just dying themselves. That's where some of the playback is to get those quick decisions into the squishy members, especially with swords, flash plays, things like that. But right now they're being pressed on topside after using that. Rift Tower, Wokow already got to go down, and it's messages. Goomba stomping them to hell. That's a kill over to Dragoon as well. Pluck's making it out alive, and the turret survives too. Yeah, and I'm not going to lie. I might be feeling a game three coming on. We have yet to have a sweep in the promotion tournament, and Lit want to continue that trend. Dragoon TP behind Winthrop as they were sieging for the top lane tier one. They're Folks from mid were not in position to come to port. And the 3v2, it's just all too easy. A fifth kill over to this Tristana. These marksmen are so strong. They really are. And uh, being able to dive at your leisure is uh, super important for the way that Lit have approached this one. They have a huge lead. They already have those dragons stacking as well. They can kind of put the presence onto Winthrop if they get that soul point as well. They'll have a lot of decision-making power around the map. But I also want to take a look at Winthrop because I was saying they have some lockdown potential. If they get some quick decisions in, they still do have some decent team fight potential as time goes on as well. Yeah, they absolutely do. And I, I think this game, far from a foregone conclusion. However, 3.6K at this point is really big. Lit is undoubtedly the ones in the lead. And what I would like to see them do now is just try and open up the map more. They've only managed to get the bottom lane tier one thus far. It's actually the only tower that's been taken in the game. So they have Dragoon pushing up on the side, move him towards mid, move your bottom lane from mid up towards top and try to threaten dives, force responses from Winthrop and utilize this very fast paced composition that you have to just demand answers. And if you're not answered, get advantages. There's that second item completed for messages as well. So both carries for lit on that spike. Be very, very big. Nothing to fight for just yet. Some dives maybe waiting to happen here. And that is something that yeah, I guess is interesting for lit where when they do have a cohesive story, when they do have this kind of composition that works together, we said we wanted to see a plain and simple style or at least something of a, of a direction coming out of the draft. And we got that for lit. And that's a breath of fresh air. It absolutely is. And and so the, the test will be in this mid-game, right? How are they able to continue to convert? Because I will be real with you, Mazel, I think Winthrop just did what I wanted Lit to do. Granted, the top lane tier one was much lower in their favor to pick that up, but they had a really nice shift up towards the top side to equalize the tower game. There's going to be a back completed for Winthrop, a second item, Rallies, for Sword. Dragon is spawning here in about 30 seconds will be that sole point we were talking about for lit and again gives them a lot of power and decision making around the map. You know, wonder if there's going to be a contest from Winthrop who might not want to give up any pressure. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a tough choice because you don't really want to give up soul point against this composition. It just puts you on such a difficult timer, but lit has very good control. That's what they traded that top lane tier one for was all these wards on the bottom side. Message is even going to preemptive Ooh. TP. They want to defend this river bush. It's a really, really time, good time flash from Chucky's get out of Shattering Strike. That was going to be a full on dive engage. Now five on five staring each other in the face in mid lane. I'm going to be honest, I, I think Messages should have just stayed top. Keep getting gold. You don't really need this dragon that badly. You just want to continue opening up the map, pressing their advantage. Now lit with the teleport being invested. They have said essentially that we are fully committed to this dragon no matter what. So they got to hope that they can pull out this fight. Dragon already half health. That's the sustained damage that this double marksman comp gives. There's Chucky's engaged. Dragoon going for the death round. They already find all plucks on damage. Now Cyclone in, separating the fight here. Dragoon is really big in the back line, and nobody's been able to get to the ADCs. Look at Rock Boom. He's going with that killer instinct, and Lit are bouncing all over Winthrop here. That's double for messages. More for Kizno and Rock Boom, and it's all the way to the Baron for lit yeah and with double 80 carries alive i think lit will just be able to burn this one down what a fight from them as plucks he's the one initially getting picked off it looks good for winthrop because they get that reset but dragoon and kizno the bash brothers that are getting in the mix here look at how much work they do on this grouped 
up Winthrop, and the 80 carries are untouched in the backside, just able to clean up the DPS once everything has been burned from their opposition. I love in that situation, Denethor is so scary to them, but they just walk together. Like, there's no way he can take both of us, right? We'll just right. walk right by him, and he just walks by them, so they just completely turn the fight around. It's like in the horror movie, right? Like, guys, just <laughs> stick together. You don't need to split up, right? If they don't can't, go if in they there. They can't kill us both, you know? Yeah, it was a really good combination from Blit. And again, we're starting to see some of that cohesion that we really needed to see from this roster. Uh, a roster that still themselves not only Winthrop, but have a lot to prove as they did not have a good split in the NACL spring. They only won those two series and they were towards the beginning of the split and went on a slump afterwards, just never being able to kind of pull it together. And here they are threatening to bring Winthrop to a three game series. Though, maybe looking for the collapse. I mean, Baron, this is Lit's opportunity to really start opening up the map the way that I wanted them to earlier. And already up six and a half thousand gold with so many towers on the map. This could extend up to maybe 8,000 ideally by the time the Baron is up. They're looking for a play onto the side lane right now. Buster shot with the combo, the explosive charge. They will make it out alive. So Winthrop's advances are nil. And in mid lane, they're going to lose a tier two. Winthrop, they want to go for it. That is they a TP do. from Sword. He has the Tibbers, but no Flash. Looking for oh, Rock Boom. Oh, Rock Boom. Rock Boom. He's all by himself. He is going to go invisible for just a second. Flash out there now, too. Whoa, Cal wants the Flash, and they take down Rock Boom. That's 900. smack a -roos right over to Whoa, Cal. And Winthrop threatened, but they lose their base at the same time. Yeah, that is a lot invested, though, from Winthrop. That's so many towers dropping. Lit still extending their advantage. Plus 3,000 on the Rally Cry Baron buff, and... They are at least going to take a tier one. So Winthrop, I think they're going to be happy with how that one went. Getting the flash off of Rock Boom, I honestly think, is maybe the most important thing out of all of that because there is a dragon soul that will be spawning before that cooldown is back up. It's going to be a tense moment still within fight's reach for Winthrop, but it's getting further and further out of their grasp. We are going to get those second items as well as a... Uh, Kraken Slayer completed for Wokow as well as his 100 Sky now. And uh, I, I think a three item spike for messages is a big deal. A three item spike for Rock Boom is a big deal. You have to be able to target out these squishy carries for Winthrop. Yeah, and I mean, because you're not going to win that front to back. Mobility, only two items. His name. He is just too far behind the opposite number to fight back in a straight up war of attrition. Winthrop, they've got to find that big flank. They've got to find that one shot, but there's so much safety on the side of Lit. I mean, Dragoon has the ability to just remove a diver from the fight at will. It's actually insane. That's honestly all worth it. All that early game, all the troubles, everything that happened, you know, you take one key member out of Winthrop's composition, that composition has a lot harder execution. And Dragoon is going to be absolutely gigantic in how they dictate the fights here. Now Winthrop, they're looking for a side lane play. They're getting set up around this dragon preemptively. About 50 seconds out for a soul for Lit. And Winthrop, they know it. They know that they have to just find someone. They have to get lucky because they are really far behind. I mean, these Lit carries are just so fed. But they are dropping midwave four. This Tristana does not have to go for the dragon messages could just try to knock down an inhibitor i think winthrop a little out of position again over grouping and dropping yeah. a wave perhaps just a bit too much they end up getting the back in time so they will be here to defend the turret they've given the up their dragon, position on the though. dragon yeah it's completely in prime position for lit I, th I think it's gone. I don't think Winthrop can really get here in time. They're so scared to face check into these bushes and get one shot or find a Mordekaiser or anything. And the dragon spawning in five seconds. They can burn this down so fast. Ooh, messages get oh, caught. Messages. He needed to find the squishy carries. He rocket jumps his way out of that one. That's huge. Re-engage from Pluck and Rock Boom. He finds mobility. That Feather Storm's not going to save you. Dragoon takes him out and lit. They're smacking him with their wallets. They get everybody out of there. The only saving grace for Winthrop is Sword. And that's a TP to mid lane to try to end the game. And 25 minutes in, Lit, they've got the wave ushering up. 30 seconds on everyone from Winthrop. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I don't think they can end. I think this might have been a bit premature from messages, but we'll see if Sword is able to cut the wave or anything like that. They're taking down the inhib turret here. They're going to look for it, Sword. Let's get the CC down. Pluck's going for the flash, but a flash in return. 
We still have a lot of turret taking power with the Tristana. Ability and they're going to move on to it. That's one Nexus turret down. Sword is here to try to defend. Nexus tower finally falls. The second one is going down now, too. They are on to wow. the Nexus. And you got to keep swinging because these fights ain't got no give. It is a full three-game series in delivery. And never underestimate the turret taking power of a Tristana Kaisa, I guess, because they knocked those ones down lit. They have equalized and this goes to show always the question in the promotion tournament is look these teams may get beat up on in the naco a little bit it makes them look bad but they promote it into this league they're playing against that higher level of competition for a reason lit showing they've got some fight left in them I love to see Rock Boom and messages popping off and a lot of those yeah. aggressive moves in. Rock Boom finding backline access a lot of the time. You love to see it. Now we'll see what the game three has in store for us after a short little break. Introducing the new Footlong Sidekicks at Subway. Try the warm and delicious Footlong Cookie, Footlong Pretzel, or Footlong Churro. I mean, all I'm going to say is like, I'm 100% winning in the promotion tournament. That's like where I shine the, the most. I was expecting to do a lot better than ninth place. We didn't really click very well towards like the middle of the season. We kind of got in our own heads a little bit. And that kind of showed in our games. Our team always said like, oh, we're, we're not a scrim team. We're a stage team. So as soon as we lost that first match, it was like a reality check. Obviously, it didn't go well. No one would say that our season went well. Individually, I had pretty solid performances, more toward the first half than the second half. A lot of us are pretty happy with the way the roster has ended up for this promotion tournament. And we picked up more pieces that we're more confident in and that are binding as players better together. Uh, there's not as much conflict as there was. So I think the only result that can happen is that we're gonna promote again. Well, my last run on the promotion tournament was awesome. We were like the big underdogs who came up, beat all the best teams and promoted. So that was really awesome. Honestly, like I just wanna live that moment again because that was probably one of the best moments like in my career, just winning that promotion tournament. We only need to win two best of fives to keep ourselves alive. And I'm pretty confident about that. I'm not gonna lie. Even though we're relegating this time around and start promoting, we're not nervous or anything i'm like pretty confident like the level of play it's not insanely high and i think that we can get to a point where we're pretty safe it's a stressful environment but we've you're used to that kind of environment we've been there before some of us we've already promoted before so if we've done it once why can't we do it again while some of the other teams they haven't really been in uh these high tense situations for example i'd say like ccg have a lot of newer players and i think maybe Maybe the nerves might get to them, maybe they won't, but, you know, it's something to think about at least. We didn't watch any of the games, but we did scrim three out of the four teams in qualifiers right now. I haven't really watched it too much, not gonna lie, like if, if at all. As long as I am focused on myself and going into game and I'm confident, like it doesn't really matter who my opponent is, I'm confident I'll beat them. I have watched the qualifiers. I've seen what everybody's capable of. I've seen how teams have grown. I don't know whether to be thankful or or to be disappointed because I I would be sweating if I had to play against Yujin. I'd be getting my handkerchief out and wiping sweat off my forehead if I had to play against that guy. I don't want to beat Winthrop. We have like a 0% win rate against them. I, I became pretty close with them during the time I was in NACL. So like I banter with a lot of their teammates. What do you think about Yukino over on CCG? I mean, he's a, he's a good player though. But he eagles too much. Yukino, I'm capping you, bro. You better watch out. Crimson has gotten a lot better over the past two to three years. He has grown a lot in top lane. Like, he's a formidable player now. And, in fact, I would expect to see him in an ACL pretty soon. All the bot lanes are actually pretty good. So, I'm excited to play against all of them. I love Shogo. I'm excited to play against him. Lynx and Instinct. And mobility is really good, too. So, I'm just excited to take them all down. Uh, we all have different goals. But I know me and Malkman especially are trying our hardest because we want to get LCS. In order to do that, we kind of have to keep our position in NACL and not relegate. So just trying our hardest to just perform and showcase our skill again for next split. I think we're keeping our spot because we are the better players. <laughs> as robotic of an answer as that was, it's uh, 
It's just the truth. To be honest, the end of the season was pretty rough for us. We took a week break and kind of just, everyone just focused on themselves a little bit. We all kind of relaxed a little bit, focused on ourselves, got better overall. And then going into the next week of scrims, we started to do a lot better. So I'm excited to see how that continues with the rest of the week of scrims going into the promotion tournament. I guess shout out to my teammates. I mean, we've, we've gone through a lot. Even if we relegate or don't relegate, it was fun, right? I guess I fun with all of you guys. Just want to say, don't count me out. Like, I'm coming. They just added Jinx into the meta. Hyperkyers are back. Like, it, it's over for you guys. Oh, I've been on losing teams more than, like, anyone else on in an ACL. You know, I was on Team Gates. I was on Phoenix 1. I was on Optic. I was on Immortals. I know how to keep strong mental.